you've just been summoned up to uh, kind of have that chat uh, with everybody else with the uh, race director and Bradley Barrett's alongside him with Thiago Stricker starting the race at the very back with absolutely nothing to lose in 23rd place so top six go through and as Ken said though it's only going to be a seven lap race uh, same length as the uh, junior heats yesterday so uh, that's all right if you're near the front but if you're at the back and you're trying to come through you'd like more laps really but at least it's a long lap here they come then out onto the circuit ready for a couple of formation laps somebody's had a spin by the looks of it coming out onto the circuit just got going again but uh, one car looked to me there on screen as if it uh, had a spin got sideways coming out onto the track on cold circuit on cold slick tires that's easily done believe you me with all the power that's been pushed through to the rear axle from these 120 it's Ayrton Simmons engines. Chris Was Ayrton it? Simmons and uh, having to get some attention to that cart and uh, this may well be a start from the pit lane if indeed he's able to start at all that's bad news for cart 40 Ayrton Simmons yeah a, a, a strong driver who's uh, just not been able to show us what he can do this weekend for one reason or another and hopefully he can get it started. It wouldn't be a complete disaster if he uh, had to start from the uh, head of the pit lane because he uh, is near the back anyways. He's only going to be 18th on the grid, even if he starts where he's supposed to, of the 23 runners. So six will go through. And another spin across, uh, across oh, there, yeah. Chris. We've got this time cart number 41, is that? Yeah. Am I reading that correctly? Yes. It's uh, Artemi Kamarnock from Eastern Europe but he's quickly got himself going again. Yeah, yes. one of the carts sounding very noisy out there. I wonder if somebody's got an exhaust problem, I'm not sure. There they come onto the second formation lap then. They're going pretty rapidly, as you can see on these formation laps, as you look on the screen at the grid again, just to remind you of who's starting where. They go pretty rapidly on these formation laps because they want to generate some heat. 35, I reckon it is, who sounds uh, really, really loud. Ido Cohen, it was one of the two carts at the back, but one of them is got some sort of exhaust issue there's a really really loud noise coming from the exhaust of one of those carts and that might be a become a, a big problem I can't see it writing itself so that's going to be a potential problem uh, if you've got uh, something wrong with the exhaust like that then whichever driver it is uh, faces the potential of being uh, asked to leave the circuit the technical disqualification flag so starting to bunch up uh, together now Generating the heat in the tyres of the brakes was the purpose of those very quick uh, formation laps. And there goes the noisy cart down into the uh, hairpin at turn 10 just now there. So we'll see what happens. That cart's fairly near the back of the grid anyway. This is going to be a seven lap race. The pack just coming out of turn 11. This is down hill actually. You can't really see that from the TV pictures, but this is a downhill section. It's the first sector of the lap which is really undulating, really rises and falls, but it's quite a quick downhill run through this flat out kink and then into this uh, hairpin. It reminds me a little bit of uh, that Sheddington circuit, that, uh, that kink down into uh, a hairpin uh, where you've got the cart still at an angle as you're hitting the brakes for the slow corner. So potential overtaking spot there, but Ken ready to talk us through what should be an exciting race. Well, we've never had a dud second chance race yet. Will Tregertha getting them away nicely and a good start by him. And Daniel Luco also making a strong start from the inside of the second row. And uh, Jano Opmeer having to battle a little bit to get in place well, has done so well because Jano Opmeer, who was definitely alongside Daniel Luco, in danger at one point of being just nudged a little bit out. Not suggesting Daniel was going to nudge him, but you can run out of track quickly. But Will Tregertha and Daniel Luco making that good start. Jano Opmeer getting the advantage over Vincent Mussero. But at the front, Will Tregertho and uh, Daniel Luco already well clear of the rest and looking as if they're getting a, a bit of a dice of their own going here. And a bid for the lead is that. And in fact, it was cart number 68. It was 66, Jano Upmere. So Jano Upmere taking the lead. Jano Upmere in cart 66 in front now of the pole sitter, Will Tregertho. Don't uh, see where Daniel Luco is. I lost him on the look. Oh, yes, yeah, still there, still there. No problem. Uh, and uh, just to say, Ken, a technical disqualification flag, the black and orange flag for Ido Cohen for that exhaust failure. Well, that's not exactly unexpected. It is a big disappointment for him, but not unexpected. 
Let me just get my bearings. Jarno Upmere, Will Tregertha and Daniel Luco was as we called it. Kasper Korhus was fourth. Vincent Massaro fifth. Alexi Kaskitalo was the driver going up into sixth place that I didn't read. So Kaskitalo making a run of it. And of course, it's always significant if you're making a move up into sixth place. Remember, sixth place does take you through. And sixth and seventh on that uh, Track there about, oh, what, 20 car lengths behind the fifth place driver is the dice for the last qualifying position. Antoine Percival is the guy needing to make the move. He's in cart number 47 and 29. Colette Canal in front of him, the guy he needs to pass. Will Tregertha sitting in second place, then behind race leader Jono Opmeer, the Netherlander, coming down then into this run into turn 12. Will. Uh, looks like if he wanted to, he could have a go, but uh, it doesn't really matter too much whether you finish first or second or third or fourth or fifth or sixth, as long as you finish in the top six and you're in the grid uh, for the final. But if he feels he's being delayed and he feels that our other drivers coming onto his tail, I'm sure he'll uh, take the decision to try and move forward, but without taking any undue risks. They climb uphill then, about to make their way into turn five, uh, four other, the left-hander, and then the right-hander at five and six, then it climbs uphill, and into the top of the course at turn seven. The top four are now together. Jano Opmeer, Will Tregertha second, Daniel Luco in third position. Fourth place is Kasper Korgius. Then there's a bit of a gap back to fifth, who's on his own at the moment, Vincent Marceau. Harrison Thomas is in the top six, so he's come up to sixth place now, moving ahead of Alexi Keskatalo, who's in the worst place of all, seventh position the first of the non-qualifying positions, but sixth, seventh, eighth and ninth are all together. So Harrison Thomas has still got work to do here. The race leaders then are about to come out of turn 11 and down towards the hairpin at turn 12. Is Will Tregertha going to have a look here? He's having a look, but the inside line is blocked, so he can't find a way through. There is an opportunity into turn 13, potentially, but no, the line is covered there and he runs a little bit wide and trying to come up the inside of him is Daniel Luco, but Daniel backs off out of it and that will cost Daniel some acceleration onto the straight. He looks over his shoulder and the blue cart in fourth place, Casper Corgius, is going to have a go, is he? Yes, he is. And he gets up the inside. And Ken, that was all because uh, Daniel Luco had a go at Will Tregertha. It didn't work. He had to get off the gas and he cost him all the acceleration onto the straight. And that's why he's dropped to fourth place now. As of course, just, just drove past him. It's what we say, isn't it? Uh, it's a seven lap race. You've got to go for the opportunities. If you're not in a qualifying position, you can miss out badly if you don't. However, it can be a worse miss if you throw yourself either out of a qualifying position or further back into a danger zone. As it is, a little bit of a gap there with the cart number 31, Daniel Luco. And so that being the case, not having quite the same issues. Now, Harrison Thomas, who was the Welshman, cart number 45 and Alexi Kaskitalo were having that dice for that last position to qualify but Chris you've got your eye on the front pairing they're not just taking it easy are they Ooh. they're definitely racing it for real Harrison oh and behind Thomas. them now yeah Harrison Thomas right. that is the battle for fifth sixth seventh and eighth therefore two of four to get into a qualifying position Harrison Three. Thomas just had a go at getting past Vance on Marceau and clipped his right rear tyre it delayed both of them but Harrison managed to keep the move held together so Harrison got the fifth place Alexi Keskatalo, uh, Zanis Slavinsky, and Dickie van der Voort all managed to get ahead of Vance and Marcero. So Marcero loses four places as a result of that slight bit of contact on the way out of the hairpin at turn 12. Harrison Thomas uh, moving up to fifth. Then Alexi Keskatalo, the Finnish driver, is in sixth place, the last of the qualifying places. Top three are together, pulling away from the fourth place driver, Daniel Luco. But then you've got fifth, sixth, seventh and eighth all together. So in a way, almost, it's that second group that we need to keep an eye on because the top four look relatively safe. Fifth, sixth, seventh and eighth. You've got four of them there battling for the final two places to qualify as well. Tregertha gets another good run going down in towards the hairpin. He's right on the rear bumper of the race leader, Yardo Upmere. But Yardo is not putting a wheel wrong here. He's sitting right on the racing line. He's not making any mistakes. He's almost being pushed down the straight by Will Tregertha because Will's got a much better exit from turn 11. But Will sensibly, he's not doing anything silly. And also very sensibly, right behind him in the blue colour scheme, Casper Corsius is not doing anything to try and get past Will when he 
has a look at these moves. So they know the three of them, that they're going to try and work together here and stay where they are. Daniel Luco still fourth, Harrison Thomas and Keskitalo still fifth and sixth. Dickie van der Waal, he's there right behind them in D seventh. Dickie van der Waal was the guy making the best charge of the guys in uh, fifth, sixth, seventh and eighth. And as you say, that was uh, a run of four at one time. But Dickie van der Waal has made sure that he's having a clear run at the guy in front of him. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then the gap is only about all oh, five cart lengths. Dickie van der Waal, the guy who was on the charge, although Zianis Slavinsky also having something to say about that. Keskitalo has got a bit of a gap back though, hasn't he, from sixth to seventh. Yeah. So uh, half a second or so. It's a little bit more spread out between the top three this time, Dan. There's a lap and a half to go in this race. It'll probably feel like a very long lap and a half. Chris, we're in that strange situation where the only sensible strategy for the top six is to stop racing, just yeah. keep going quickly, but the racing brain sometimes kicks in. Going on to the final lap of the race and into turn one, they're almost home and dry, the top three. Jano Opmeer still leads from Wilter Gerther, who's right behind him, but not trying anything silly. Sensible drive, this Casper Corgius. It's just dropped two or three cart lengths behind them in third place. Fourth, fifth and sixth are together, but they're all in qualifying positions. Luco, then Thomas, then Keskitalo. Dickie van der Waal is trying to catch them up. Last time around, Dickie didn't close the gap. He lost out by about three tenths of a second, but he started this lap very well. He's got to have an absolutely perfect lap, really, to try and catch up to them. So through onto the back straights, down towards the hairpin at turn 10 for the final time come the top three. There they are. Opamir, Tregertha, Cautious, Luco in the blue colour scheme. There's an overtake there for fifth place as Keskitalo is that. Yes, Keskitalo going uh, past Harrison Thomas, but then Thomas got him back on the way out of the corner. So Thomas is still there. Tregertha right on the tail of the race leader on the way down into the hairpin. I thought he was going to have a go, but he doesn't. So he holds station and uh, poor old Dickie van der Voort can't quite catch them up, Ken. Well, he's given a good show, hasn't he? But he's done enough so far. Nothing to be done silly now. Here comes the chequered flag. And your qualifiers are race winner, Jarno Otmir. Second place, Will Tregertha. Third place, Kasper Corhus. Fourth place, Harrison Thomas. Been impressed with that drive. Alexi Kaskitalo getting the advantage over Daniel Luco. But it was the unlucky flying Dutchman, Dickie van der Waal, to finish in what Chris described as the worst place in the world at the end of a second chance race. That's seventh place. Zjarnia Slavinsky gave us a good race and he's unlucky to see that he'll go no further in the competition. Vincent Massaro ninth and Jonathan Hoggard completing the top ten. But congratulations to those guys that have made it into the finals proper, led by race winner Jarno Opmeer. And unfortunately, we have to bid farewell to the others. Well, Chris is going to make his way down to the grid. And uh, if he's able to have a chat with some of those guys, then we'll get the message from the horse's mouth, so to speak. Always good to hear what the drivers have to say with Chris because it takes us right into the heart of their thinking. And uh, in the cases of the second chance racers, it's always a situation where there's nothing to lose in giving it everything you've got. On the uh, front row of the seniors in the second chance race will be Remo Rahala and Glenn Rupp. No doubt we'll have a chat with them. But confirmation again on screen, the junior second chance heat race Jano Opmeer wins it. Will Tregertha qualifies in second place. Kasper Corhus in third place. Harrison Thomas in fourth. Alexi Keskitalo in fifth. And Daniel Luco in sixth place. Sadly, we have to bid farewell to the rest of the guys, but please do stay with us. And we'll go down now to Chris in the paddock, see who he can have a chat with. Thanks very much, Ken. Yeah, just making my way uh, through the network of uh, passages and gates through the scrutineering area to try and